Perhaps the biggest surprise in a movie containing several unexpected twists is that Betty walks away unpunished at the end, giving the world a raspberry kiss-off instead of suffering the femme fatale's typical demise. Now, this was no code-mandated happy ending. It was something fairly common in Hugo Haas films. After taking great delight in showing people behaving at their worst, Haas often ended things on a light comedic note, essentially winking at the audience. It was a refreshing change from the death sentences studios often mandated for treacherous vixens. And it revealed Haas's cynical but not savage view of human nature. Compared to a storyteller like Fritz Lang, who made many similar movies, Haas was a comic at heart. The Writers Guild of America nominated Pickup as Best Written Low Budget Film of 1951, an award that went to Sam Fuller for The Steel Helmet. Now, an interesting subtext of the film, added by Haas and his co-writer Arnold Lipp, is the sense of cultural displacement felt by Haas's hunky character. This was something felt personally by both Haas and Lipp, a transplanted German who wrote lots of B pictures during the 40s. One can read a lot into Haas's compassionate depiction of the professor, a vagrant thief who steals books from the library, yet is the only trustworthy and unselfish character in this jerkwater town. It's a good role for Howland Chamberlain, who had played bit parts in lots of good noirs, Brute Force, The Web, Force of Evil, Thieves Highway, and many others. After making High Noon in 1952, Chamberlain was blacklisted as a suspected communist and didn't make another feature film until 1979's Kramer vs. Kramer. On the heels of Pickup's success, Beverly Michaels immediately made another film with Haas, The Girl on the Bridge, a good film, also co-written by Arnold Lipp, who billed himself as Phillips in the credits. After that, Haas found another muse, buxom Cleo Moore, who'd make seven films with him. In 1953, Michaels would make her signature film, Wicked Woman, playing a slightly softer version of the same character from Pickup. She married that film's director, Russell Rouse, and only made four more movies before retiring in 1956. By the end of the 1950s, during which Hugo Haas made 13 features, critical consensus vilified him as one of the worst filmmakers in the business. But Haas didn't just have the last laugh, he was laughing all along. He avoided the pitfalls of other European refugees in Hollywood by gleefully pandering to the prurient, if puritanical, taste of the American public, always noting that while his films were excoriated as trash, not a single one he produced himself failed to turn a handsome profit. Now, I'll wind up with the story of the other man in today's movie. Alan Nixon had been a professional football player and a pro wrestler before catching on in Hollywood in a few early B films. He married sexy comedian Marie Wilson, and at one point was in line to replace Johnny Weissmuller as the next Tarzan. But Nixon's penchant for boozing and brawling derailed his late-blooming career. Columbia gave him a contract after pickup, but unruly behavior sabotaged his career. His marriage fell apart, and desperate for money, Nixon became an informant for Confidential Magazine. When that came out in court, it effectively ended his acting career. But Nixon had an ace up his sleeve. In the 1960s, he remade himself as a writer of pulp novels, things like Blessed Are the Damned and The Bitch Goddess. And under the pseudonym Dan Romano, he wrote a series of bogus expose novels with titles like Mafia, Operation Porno. Looking back on his Hollywood career, Nixon said, Things went wrong, let's just put it that way. I'm not bitter, I enjoyed it, the people I met and the fun I had. Well, I hope you had fun watching Pickup. Next week we go big budget with a widescreen full color remake of the classic 1941 caper film, High Sierra. Jack Palance and Shelley Winters take on roles originally played by Humphrey Bogart and Ida Lupino in I Died a Thousand Times. Until then, I'll see you in the shadows.